Welcome to the Practical Data Management class. This is Part 1 of Module 1 in a series of three modules. Module 1 covers getting started with data planning. Module 1 has four parts. This movie will cover Part 1, the data lifecycle and searching for data that you can reuse. The other parts of Module 1 are available as separate movies. What if someone in your lab quits? What if you are accused of fraud or your laptop gets stolen? Or what if you could get more credit for your work? These are some provocative questions which I hope caught your attention. These are questions that can be addressed with good data management practices. When we say data, we mostly mean scientific data you'd collect in a lab or during field work. But data can be interpreted broadly. You can apply some of these practices to your coursework, to projects you do for school or work, or even to your photographs at home. Here is a model of the data life cycle. It starts with a research question, goes through finding relevant data made by others, making a plan to manage your own data, collecting and describing your data, archiving it, and publishing it. This model is helpful to visualize the steps involved in creating and reusing data within a research project. All three of our classes will cover the best things to do at each of these stages. In Module 1, we'll cover these steps. Let's start with the data search. After developing the research question, the next step in a research project should be a literature search on your topic, which we know many people delay until they start writing their article after all the research is done. The best practice, however, is to do your literature search early in the process, and it's also good practice to do a data search at the same time as your literature search to look for other researchers' data sets to inform your own experimental design. There are three ways to search for data. Let's start with searching for data in literature. Say you're searching the topic of earwigs. Here's an example of an article that you could have found in a literature search using a normal article database like Web of Science. In this case, this article is in the journal American Naturalist. Your eye is normally drawn to the abstract, but you also want to look for supplemental material and any links to data sets, which will be at the top or at the sides, generally. This example has a supplements tab and the data set link is at the bottom. This will vary journal by journal. Take a look at where the relevant data is stored. In this example, the data is stored in a data repository called Dryad. This might be a good repository for you to search directly for other data sets. Data repositories are sites that collect experimental data. They vary in subject, types of data collected, and size. Their primary role is archiving, but many allow searching and downloading of data. Let's talk more about data repositories. A second way to find data is to look in data repositories. If you don't know which data repository to look in, there are directories for this. Re3Data is an example. It's freely available on the web. You can search here to find data repositories that match your subject area. A search in Re3Data searches for your keywords in the descriptions of the data repositories, but it does not search for your keywords in the descriptions of the data sets within that repository. For example, we know the Dryad has data about earwigs in it, and the Dryad repository is listed in Re3Data. But if you search in Re3Data for the word earwigs, you would get zero results because there isn't an entire data repository dedicated to earwigs, and the description of Dryad doesn't mention earwigs either. But if you go to Re3Data and browse under zoology, for instance, you would find Dryad listed. So, the tips for searching in directories are browse the listings by subject area, or use broad terms for your search words, like climate or zoology. When you do find a repository in your subject area, such as Dryad, you can search there directly. Search tips here are different in a repository than in a directory. Currently, the searching in repositories is pretty primitive. Your search will require more trial and error with keywords. Play with both broad and narrow terms. Think about other ways the data may have been described and use synonyms. A third way to search for data is in databases. You may know Web of Science as a literature database. The same company also has a database of data sets called the Data Citation Index. Just like in Web of Science, when you find a citation in the Data Citation Index, you click on the title and it takes you to the data set itself inside of the data repository where it lives. Data in Dryad is indexed here 
along with data from other repositories. Unlike RE3 data, searches in the Data Citation Index are searching inside the repositories at the level of, de of the descriptions of the individual data sets, instead of just searching the descriptions of the larger repositories. For example, if you search in Data Citation Index for earwigs, you are likely to find the earwig data set from Dryad that you found earlier from your literature search. So search tips in the Data Citation Index are the same as those for searching in a repository directly. Play with both broader and narrower terms and use synonyms. We are in the early days of data sharing and the tools we showed you for locating data are the most developed so far, but it is an emerging field. This is the end of part one of module one of the Practical Data Management class series. Thanks for listening.